Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Vana Dari Sodanandana Bhaja Janna Ranjana Jasodanandana Bhaja Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Gopi Janna Balaba Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Balaba Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Vano Dari Sora Nandana Bhati Janna Ranjana Jasoda Nandana Bhaja Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Tira Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Jam Prasad Paramahamsa Prabhu Jagacharya Asa Tursat Rishi Shimad His Divine Grace Sila AC Bhakti Nanta Swami Sila Prabhupada Ki Ananda Gaudavaish Duna Ki Jai Namacharya Sila Harda Stakur Ki Jai Iskan Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Prem Sikaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Giradhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vinaki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gagopinath Samakun Radhakun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Sri Vrindavanam Ki Jai Sri Maya Panavidam Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Jamuna Maya Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samavira Bhakti Vinaki Ki Jai Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Go Premanandi All glorious Sama devotees All glorious Sama devotees All glorious Sama devotees All glorious All glorious Shishi Guru and Shri Gauranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So this morning we're reading the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 29, Text Number 65. Tenasya Tadrasam Rajan Lingino Deha Sambhavam Shadhats Vhanu Bhutorto Na Mana Spastum Arhati Tainasya Sadhus Tainasya Tadru Samrajan Lingano Deo Sambavam Shatat Val Na Nubotorto Namana Spastum Arhati Tainasya Tadru Samrajan Lingano Deya Sambhavan Shatat Vana Nuburto To Namana Mispastum Arhati Tainasya Tadru Samrajan Lingano Deya Sambhavan Shodasvara nubho torto Namana spastum arhati Tenas tajasam rajan Lingano dehe sambhavan Shodasvara nubho torto Namana spastum arhati Tainasya Tatrasam Rajan I think that's an N at the end, that Rajan, not Rod. Oh, really? Oh, interesting, okay. Tainasad Sadrasam Rajao Ningano Deha Sambhavan Siddhisvan Bhutorto Namanas Vastamarhati Taina Therefore Asya of the living entity Tadrasam Like that Rajan, O King, Lingana, who has a subtle mental covering, Deya Sambhavam, produced in the previous body, Shadhatsva, accept it as fact, Anubhuta, not perceived, Artha, a thing, na, never, manaha, in the mind, sprastum, to manifest, arhati, is able. Translation and purport by his divine grace. See the Prabhupada key? Therefore, my dear king, the living entity who has a subtle mental covering, develops all kinds of thoughts and images because of his previous body. Take this from me as certain. There is no possibility of concocting anything mentally without having perceived it in the previous body. Hmm. Krishna Bahirmukha Hana Bhoga Vanchekare Nikata Stahamaya Tare Japatiya Dare this is from the Prema Vivarta purport. Actually, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the Supreme Enjoyer. When a living entity wants to imitate him, he is given a chance to satisfy his false desire to lord it over material nature. That is the beginning of his downfall. As long as he is within this material atmosphere, he has a subtle 
vehicle in the form of the mind, which is the stockpile of all kinds of material desires. Such desires become manifest in different bodily forms. Srila Narada Muni requests the king to accept this fact from him because Narada is an authority. The conclusion is that the mind is the storehouse of all of our past desires and we have this present body due to our past desires. Similarly, whatever we desire in this present body will be expressed in a future body. Thus the mind is the source of different kinds of bodies. If the mind is purified by Krishna consciousness, one will naturally in the future get a body that is spiritual and full of Krishna consciousness. Such a body is our original form. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms, Jivara Swarupahoy, Krishna Nichidas. Well, so much for that theory that we weren't originally with Krishna. <laughs> Every living entity is constitutionally an eternal servant of Krishna. If a person is engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, he is to be considered a liberated soul even in this life. This is confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami. Iha yasya haridasya karmana manasagira nikila sapira sasu jivan mukta su one who engages in the transcendental service of the Lord in body, mind, and words is to be considered liberated in all conditions of material existence. Bhakti Rasa Sindhu, 12187. The Christian consciousness movement is based on this principle. We must teach people to absorb themselves always in the service of the Lord because that position is their natural position. One who is always serving the Lord is to be considered already liberated. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 14.26. Mangcha yogi vichayana bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samiti chaitam brahma buyaya kalpate. One who always engages in the spiritual activities of unalloyed devotional service at once transcends the modes of material nature and is elevated to the spiritual platform. The devotee is therefore above the three modes of material nature and is even transcendental to the Brahman platform. A Brahmana may be infected with the two baser modes, namely Rajagun and Tamagun. A pure devotee who is free from all material desires experienced on the mental platform and who is also free from empiric philosophical speculation or fruit of activity is always above material conditioning and is always liberated. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Omigyana Tamanandasya Gyananjana Sulakya Chakshun Militam Jaina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Mukham Krotavacha Lung Pongan Lung Hai Tegarim Yat Kripa Tadaham Bande Shikarim Dinataranam Vanchi kapati bhyascha kripa sindhu bhyevacha patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare As we have heard many times in reading Prabhupada's books and hearing that we have these two bodies, the gross body and the subtle body. Now the subtle body is actually what is most important. This body is going to die inevitably, sooner or later. <laughs> But we're going to continue. The soul is going to continue, and the mind, and the subtle body is going to continue, the consciousness. So what we're trying to do in this Krishna consciousness movement is to purify this subtle body. Uh, Kapila Dev, he says, Jaya yasi yakosha nigirnam anloyata that the, this process, this bhakti yoga process, it um, purifies 
or dissolves the contamination of the subtle body. And he goes on to say that just uh, we, we, we may not be able to perceive how this is happening. Just like when we, when we eat, we don't perceive how all the nutrients are being distributed throughout the body and, and uh, uh, helping us to be healthy. It's, it's, even doctors, it's, it's kind of it's mystical how everything is working in the body. So it's also very mystical how we get purified simply by this uh, process of Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing Bhagavad Gita. So this purifies the subtle body. There's an interesting uh, pastime with Lord Brahma. You know, he was creating people with thought, by his mind. And he created some, uh, Prabhupada mentions in the purport in this regard, that he was a little bit in the mode of passion, so he created some that were, had a, an, a, a homosexual appetite. And they were kind of approaching him, and he kind of laughed like, it's ridiculous, you know, but they were serious, and he, and he prayed to Krishna, Krishna, please help me here. And what did he say? He said, cast off this body. So desire is also like a, it's a body. It's a subtle body. He said, cast it off. And he did, he cast it off. So we also, we have these, sometimes these material desires, they, as we heard just they bubble up, you know. The, we have to cast them off. They come, you let them go, you know. Of course, our spiritual desires, we, we keep them. Those are also bodies. These are subtle bodies. Material desires are subtle bodies that kind of keep us down into the material platform. But there's also these subtle spiritual bodies, desires, that lift us. They lift us from the material uh, level of existence. So we're trying to increase our spiritual, subtle bodies. It's interesting that, uh, I was just reading how, actually I'm, I'm just going to read this, very interesting. I was reading in purport, and Prabhupada says, the atmosphere of the subtle body at the time of death is created by the activities of the gross body. This, or excuse me, thus the gross body acts during one's lifetime and the subtle body acts at the time of death. If the human being is taught to change his subtle body by Krishna consciousness, he can get a spiritual body and return home back to Godhead. So that's the goal. <laughs> to uh, practice Krishna consciousness and at the time of death, if we're absorbed in Krishna, then we get our spiritual body. We go back home. You know? So this is the this is the goal. It's it's not an easy uh, goal to achieve, but it's the this is the highest. This is the highest goal. Now, in this purport, Prabhupada mentions this. Uh, this verse from the Prima Vivarta, that the living entity, he uh, develops this desire to enjoy this material world. And he becomes victimized by Maya. Becomes covered. There's Avarnatmika and Praxipatmika. You know, there's the covering. <laughs> there's the covering and then there's the throwing. So we get covered by this, uh, by Maya, and we get thrown. So we have the freedom to try and enjoy Maya, or Prabhupada says we can be a hero and resist Maya. We can be a hero and resist Maya. 
by controlling the senses. Vacho vegam, malasakroda vegam, jiva vegam, urapasta vegam, etan vegam, yovas, the hate of tira, sarvali, pimam, pritivinksa, sisyat. That one who is able to control the urge to speak, the mind's demands, anger, the tongue, belly, and general, he's qualified to make disciples all over the world. So, if one is able to control the senses, then uh, one is considered to be a hero. This is a real hero. Of course, you know, there's also heroes, heroes that are out there in the battlefield and they're fighting and, they're, and they're, they conquer. Those are also heroes. But to be able to, con to conquer the mind, that's a much greater hero. To conquer the mind, to conquer the senses, uh, that's a much greater hero. Of course, uh, we're meant to also engage our senses in the service of Krishna, right? And this is uh, this this purifies the senses, uh, just like uh, there was a devotee that was most expert at at speaking, yeah? Sukadev Goswami, and there was a devotee who was so expert. At hearing, you know, Prakshit Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj, he was the best at remembering Krishna. Yeah. So these are different senses that we could use in the service of Krishna. And seeing, we see the beautiful forms of the deities. This is sense gratification for a devotee. Yeah. To see Prabhupada also. Devotees always wanted to see Prabhupada. The Prabhupada would arrive at an airport and there'd be sometimes hundreds of devotees there. They wanted to see Prabhupada. So beautiful, Prabhupada, so beautiful, it's <laughs> transcendental. So to see the form of the devotee, to see the form of Krishna, it's very pleasing to the eyes. Yeah? And tasting Krishna prasadam. So this purifies. So we could also utilize the, the, our senses in the service of Krishna and get purified. And this purifies the subtle body. Also, although we're using these the, the, these gross senses, this purifies the subtle body. Uh, so, but we're not just into into control, into controlling the senses. Like the Buddhists, they're into that, you know, controlling the senses. But what is their goal? Nirvana, zero, just. No taste. Yeah. I just, it was kind of interesting that Lord Nityananda, when he was traveling, he went to some, he saw some Buddhists, and he went to get some directions, and and they didn't answer him. They ignored Lord Nityananda. So what did he do? He kicked them. <laughs> he started kicking them, <laughs> and they started running all over the place. <laughs> So, don't ignore Lord Nityananda. <laughs> so, no, we have a we have a target. Our goal is to engage in loving service to Krishna, and this is very pleasing to the soul. Very pleasing to the soul. Actually, Prabhupada says in one one purport, very interesting. He says that the. Uh, the the bow is the Hare Krishna mantra. The bow is like a the, is, is the pranava mantra. The living entity is the arrow, and the living entity, by his pure desire to serve, he shoots himself back to the lotus feet of Krishna <laughs> in the spiritual world. <laughs> so that's our goal to get purified by devotional service and by, you know, of course, by this chanting of Hare Krishna and we'll, we'll shoot ourselves back to the lotus feet of Krishna. Interesting, huh? <laughs> So this is the goal, to go back to Krishna. And this is where life is really, really happening. Pure where everybody has a pure, subtle body. Everybody is pure. 
here everybody's so contaminated by the modes of material nature and therefore so much suffering. In the spiritual world there's no three modes of material nature, there's only one mode. Prabhupada said the mode of pure devotional service. <laughs> the mode of pure devotional service. Yeah, so this is the the mode that we're trying to cultivate. Just uh, engaging in in service to Krishna. This will satisfy us. Nothing else will satisfy the soul. Lord Chaitanya, he gives an interesting uh, analogy. I think it was to Sanatana Goswami of one astrologer named Saragya. And he went to one uh, poor man's home. And he was lamenting. The poor man was lamenting, I'm so poor. So he said, no, no, no. Saragya said, no, 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 no. You're very fortunate. You've been left a great treasure. A great treasure has been left for you. But when you go to get this treasure, be very careful. Because if you dig on the southern side of where this treasure is, you're going to become harassed by so many drones and bees, and they're going to bite you so much that you'll not be able to get the, the treasure. And if you, if you dig on the, on the this, that's, that's the southern side, if you dig on the, on the western side, you're going to be harassed by ghosts. And they're going to scare you so much, they're going to spook you <laughs> so much that you're not going to be able to get the, the treasure. If you live, dig on the northern side, then you're going to be devoured by a big black snake. So don't, don't go there. But if you dig on the eastern side, there you'll find the treasure. And what is the treasure? Bhakti. This is the treasure. So people are being stung in this material nature. Just like now we have this COVID-19. And all over the world people are being stung. It's like in India, so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people were, had, had, were fired from their job. They had, and the buses weren't working. They had to walk two, three days, sometimes four days. And then they'd get to the village and they wouldn't allow them in because they're afraid that they might have the virus. <laughs> so imagine they're just being tormented you know, all over, especially the third world countries. It was, it was like this in all the third world countries pretty much. First world countries, they weren't near as, as affected uh, by this. But people are getting burnt in so many ways. They're getting stung. It's like I remember uh, Dev Amrita Swami, he was, he, in, in a class, he was telling this rather, rather vivid uh, description of people being stung. There was this, this couple, boy and girl, you know, girlfriend and boyfriend, and, and the boy, he had an affair with a girl. And his girlfriend found out, and she was very upset. And he was remorseful and he said, oh, I'm so sorry, is there anything I can do to, to, to make up for this? And she said, yes, you have to kill that girl. <laughs> he was so attached to his, to, his, to his girlfriend, he said, all right, let's do it. So they, he, he called up the girl that he had an affair with and, and made an arrangement, he used to pick her up and then they just taken her, and, and his girlfriend was in the back seat of the car. <laughs> so they're, they're driving, and, and they, they killed her. They killed her. I don't know. I think it was America. Actually, they were th this couple, they were actually very, 
there were students at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a big, mili a very prestigious military school. Yeah. And it was America. So then sometime later, the the girl she said to to one of her friends, "Have you been? Have you ever been so jealous that you killed a girl?" And the, the lady she was speaking said, "No." I said, "Well, I have." And then she told the authorities, and the authorities when they, the police got her, and then they got the guy. You know, and then you know I don't know thirty years in jail or something. You know. So. Because of the sense gratification, people get stung so much. Yeah. Like I remember I was in an airport one time, and a, there was a newspaper there, and I thought, let's see what, see what the news is. Yeah. <laughs> so I picked it up, and it was just the material world, you know, just, it's, it's unbelievable. This, uh, this man, he was you know, a businessman, he, he, he went home early, unexpectedly, and he, he, get, he goes home, and there's, there's his wife's having sex with another man in the bed. So he just goes and gets his gun, shoots them both, kills them. Yeah. Talking about getting stung. <laughs> All this crazy things going on in the material world. Yeah. And then he had to go to court, and, and the, the judge understood his, his unusual circumstance, so he just gave him six months in jail because of the... Yeah, just yeah, out of passion. So this is the material world. You know, people getting stung so much because of the sense gratification, just out of control senses. You know, we can't imagine. We're like in this, you know, in, in Krishna consciousness. We're like in this oasis. You know, protected from all this. We don't. We can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, I, I probably never read the news. I don't hear what's going on. But there's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there. You know, madness. So, we're under the shelter of Krishna, and we should stay under the shelter of Krishna, this soothing shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Yeah. So then the, the western side, where you, you get uh, harassed by the, by the ghost. I remember I was distributing books one time in Miami, and I approached one person and yeah, I showed the books to him and uh, asked for a donation, and he was a little unusual, you know. He said he had been to India, and but he was acting a little unusual, you know. So he said, yeah, 1918, 1980, you know, 1980. <laughs> he gave a donation, you know. Not mine, not mine, not mine, 1980. Of course, it doesn't mean not mine. <laughs> it means not this, not that. <laughs> but you, you could see, he's very, very confused, you know. <laughs> they gave a nice donation and took a book, but you know, people they they read the Vedic literatures and and quite often they become very confused. And uh, this is why, Srila Prabhupada, he gave us the Bhagavad Gita, as it is, nothing confusing. It's like big scholars saying things that are just ridiculous, you know. It's not unto Krishna that we that we once surrendered, but unto the unborn within Krishna. You know, where do you get that from? <laughs> Just as, as Prabhupada said, the, their fertile brain. They come up with these ideas in their fertile brain. You know, like, <laughs> oh, there's no, no statement like that. There's no difference between Krishna's in, his inside and his outside. He's a completely transcendental body. So, people become very confused. And he's a, he, he was the president of the country, you know. So people hear that, you know, he's a scholar, he's a president of the country, so hear that, oh, okay, yeah, all right, it makes sense to me, all right. <laughs> Become confused so much. So we're so fortunate that we have the Bhaktivedanta purports. Everything is very clear. Everything is very clear. No speculation. It's like this, I was just hearing this uh, mother, Daivi Shakti, she she was uh, studying in the university. She said she wanted to know about God, so she was studying philosophy and different religions. And she said when she when she read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, it's very clear. Krishna is God. 
so she she quit school and and she was just thinking this knowledge is so valuable i gotta i gotta i gotta share it with people i gotta let people know about this yeah she had never met a devotee but she was she was already thinking how can i help others with this knowledge how can i get this knowledge to others and then she met some devotees who were distributing books, and she, she said, oh, yeah, I, I read these books. These are great books. Where, is there a temple? Is there anything? Where, where can I meet you people? Then she moved into the temple, and, of course, she quickly learned about book distribution immediately. She's been distributing books for over 50 years, <laughs> since 1970. It's amazing. Such, I mean, she's another one of our Queen Kuntis in Iskan. You know, it's amazing. Amazing devotee. So, and she said when she was on book distribution, she wasn't so much into getting a lot of books out. She said, each day, I want to make one devotee. <laughs> and she made so many devotees. <laughs> That's amazing. She was focused on making devotees. If she, if she found someone that was kind of interested or, you know, inclined towards, because she would, she would spend a lot of, she would preach to that person. Yeah, something we should uh, also meditate on. We find someone that's, that's uh, interested, that's ripe, we should spend time. Like uh, Shastra Kid also, in, he was distributing books at uh, uh, Cal State Long Beach, and he was... Uh, found this person is, uh, that was quite interested. So he, he, he took him to the site. He spoke to him for two hours. He went, he went away from his table and spoke to him for two hours. And he's, this person's a devotee now in uh, Los Angeles, disciple of Devan Swami. So, yeah, this is actually, this is, this is what Prabhupada wanted, you know. And at one point, we had distributed so many books and so many devotees had joined. And Prabhupada said, okay, now boil the milk. Yeah. Now let's concentrate on making devotees strong. Of course, so many letters after that, Prabhupada said, no, no, you know, emphasizing book distribution. So, so that it, I think that was in 73 or 74 or something like that. So then, of course, of course, he kept on emphasizing book distribution. But he wanted us to to, uh, to take very seriously this Christian consciousness. Because, unfortunately, so many people were leaving. And that's why he said, boil the milk. Come on, let's get serious. You know, people are uh, coming and going too much. It's very disturbing to, to see the Prabhupada. So then, if one uh, digs on the northern side, that's the, the black snake, which is the uh, uh, mystic yoga. People get, the, uh, get these, these mystic abilities, and they become bewildered. They become devoured by this, by this pride and everything. Just like we have this uh, such a sly bubba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had some little abilities, and he bewildered people, millions of people some mystic abilities and just, I don't know, control their minds or something. I don't know. But yeah, he had uh, 20 million followers. Bewildered. Thought he was God. Hmm. So many, so many people get these mystic abilities and, 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 uh, and before people. People get fooled. You know. Oh yeah, he must be God. He, he could produce gold. So, Srila Prabhupada came to let us know who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. Krishna. Krishna has all opulence. Just like so many of these people that are, that are posing as God, they're not very attractive. <laughs> But Krishna is so attractive, so beautiful. Yeah. You never you, you never hear of Krishna, you know, 
becoming ill, except for one time, Krishna had a headache. He had a headache. And the devotees didn't know what to do. Well, Krishna, what do you do? You get the dust from my devotee's feet, and that will cure the headache. So go and get some... I think it was, he was telling Narada Muni. I think it was Narada Muni. So he went to some devotee, and Krishna, he's got a headache. He, he needs some dust off your feet to, to take away the headache. Put it on his own head. <laughs> I can't do that. Put the dust on my feet on Krishna's head. I'll go to hell. And no one would do it. And Krishna said, go to Vrindavan. And go to my gopis. And you tell them. That. And Narada said, Krishna, he's got a headache. He wants the dust from your feet to put on his head to cure him of this, of this headache. So what did they do? Immediately they're scraping off the dust from their feet. Here, take, 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 take. How much do you want? <laughs> but aren't you concerned that you know, you're, you're going to go to hell? You know, dust from your feet, go on to Krishna's head? No, we don't care. We just want to please Krishna. Krishna's got a headache. He wants the dust from our feet. No problems. Whatever. This is love. Yeah. This is love. Ashlishiva paravitam pinas to mama darsna maravitam karotuva yatatata vavadidhatu lampatum at prana nata su seva ma nabara. I know no one but Krishna is my Lord. And he shall remain so, even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me broken hearted by not being present before me, he's completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful Lord. So this is love. Sometimes people ask, what is love? Yeah. This is love. And no matter what the object of my love does, still, I'm going to have affection for that person. Uh, so Krishna, he's, uh, he's so wonderful. He's so beautiful. He's so uh, powerful, very strong. He's so strong, he's known as Satya Sankalpa, that whatever Krishna wants, it happens. Just like this planet is very heavy. Can't imagine. I mean, millions of tons. Millions of tons. But Krishna, just by his will, it floats around in the atmosphere like, like a cotton swab, like nothing. This is the power of Krishna. And there's millions of planets. This is a small planet, a small universe. So Krishna, by his power, all these planets are just floating around. So powerful. But people claim to be God. Like just a couple of weeks ago, I met some person who claimed to be God. I said, but you know, one of the intricate qualities of God. He knows everything. Tell me what I'm thinking. And he speculated about what I was thinking. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> you know, you're listening to people saying, you're God, I'm God, we're all God. But you're, you're not God. You can't even pass the, the, the first little test that God knows everything. You know very little. You're not God. And he appreciated. And he thanked me, actually. Yeah, he was, he was very thankful that this is the first time that, that someone has, has checked my misunderstanding with logic. <laughs> Just a simple little thing like that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know everything. How can you be God? So there's so many cheaters out there that are preaching this nonsense, preaching so much nonsense. So we have to give this knowledge out to the people so that, so that they get good sense, good sense of who they are. Servants of Krishna. We're all servants of Krishna. Dasa, das, anu, das. But people want to be basa, basa, anu, bas. They don't want to be the city. They want to be the boss. Everybody wants to be the boss. Boss, boss, honor, boss. 
but no. Krishna is known as uh, what is it? Kartam Isha, the boss. <laughs> Krishna is the ultimate boss. There's so many bosses on this planet, millions of bosses, but Krishna is the Param. He's the supreme boss. And we want to be servants of him and his servants. Dasa das anu das. And this will satisfy the soul. So any question or comment? Uh, in the in the verse, um, the last sentence was, "There is no possibility of concocting anything mentally, without having perceived it in the previous body." Um, not doesn't doesn't say a previous body; it says the previous body. Um, so, should I understand that to really to mean the previous body, and in what w way? And also, I I think this shouldn't be so hard to understand. But uh, also, can't I imagine something? That's the last that sentence. In, no. the, in the verse? In the verse. Oh, in the, in the verse. verse. In the oh, verse. yeah, okay. And then also, one could say that, well, I can, I can think of things which, do, I, I can think of a, I can think of a species which doesn't exist and just never will, like, that's outside the 8.4 million. I can, like, Think of a species that never existed? Like, I could concoct some fake animal or something. Spaghetti monster? Yeah. <laughs> but, so then, would you understand, how would you understand, I mean, you could maybe say that, but still, all those components have to be some component which you've experienced at some point. Because it's like I can't concoct a color that I haven't seen. Like there's no possibility of me concocting a new color and like thinking, imagining a new color if I never experienced it. But I could concoct like an animal, but then you could say, well, all those parts of the animal I've experienced, I, I can't like think of some new feature I've never seen before. But here it's saying no possibility of, con of concocting. Any so is that, is that how you would understand the idea of not concocting anything you haven't experienced previously? And what about previously? There is no possibility of concocting anything mentally without having perceived it in the previous body. Well, I guess, I mean, you can concoct some ridiculous thing, you know, just for argument's sake, you know, but, but this is being practical. There is no possibility of concocting anything mentally without having perceived it in a previous body. Javita, maybe you'd like to say something about this? Uh, or sorry, about Raj? I wondered about the same thing. Did you did you look up the Vishnu's commentary yet on this? No, no, no. Okay. I was just gonna. What what is what what's the verse number? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Hare Krishna Prabhu, you need to use the mic. We cannot hear you, Prabhu. Okay, r repeat. Raj is going to say something. Our under the philosophy, my understanding, is that it's uh, the subtle body is a, is a composite, an aggregate of all our past desires. Some of them have been taken care of and some of them aren't. Not that every single desire of the last life is being taken care of in this life and this new life will then become the next life. It's all one, one, one. It's, it's an aggregate plays out hmm. yeah. um, I think what, what what's being explained because I'm looking at Jiva uh, Vishnu Chakrabarti has also a little thinking but it's, uh, he's simply repeating it is not possible for things to appear in the mind that have not been experienced just as things seen or heard when a person is young appear in his mind when he is older things experienced in many previous bodies appear in the mind in this body if that is so, then you should know that it is the mind and nothing else. So certainly, I mean, you can concoct. In other words, Prabhupada even says, I remember listening to, the, to a lecture, 
You've seen a mountain. You've seen gold. So in your dream, you can see a gold mountain, or you can imagine a gold mountain. You know, and and so so it's just, it's simply a, a a churning of the of the on the material plane. Of you're you're experiencing so many things, and uh, some of the things are frightful. They also appear in the mind, and you know. It, but you but you've also experienced. Uh, a big hero, so you're the hero, and you, you, you know what I mean? It, it, all of this stuff is a, 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 a aggregate of the impressions that you've experienced, not just visual, but also auditory and, 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 and smelling and everything. And uh, that can, you can, you can concoct that, and it can be in a dream or a daydream. And pa many people live in that daydream. Just like today, you know, there are all kinds of, of things going on on the internet, and people get into that. And they believe a whole reality, and they see everything through that, that because of the, you know, of the of the information that they've gotten, it's all, you know, imaginary. It's an imagination on top of an imagination. You know, this is so. This is what I, I understand it. Okay, thank you. But I wanted to ask, say one other thing about yeah. Daivi Shakti. <laughs> you know, she gets they they put her on Nandabats periodically. I don't know if you saw. Her yeah, yeah, yeah. But she had a, they had an interview with her about her own experience, uh, bec becoming a devotee and her experience in New York. Yeah, and I interviewed her. Oh, was it you who interviewed her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Were you the one who, where she drew out and how much she actually collected from, the, from David Meter Swami? The oh, no, no, no. So that was some, some other, maybe I saw them. She was so empowered. I mean, it's an amazing story. I'm not going to get into the whole detail, but he was he was uh, fascinated by Prabhupada's books, but he didn't like the devotees. He said they're too weird. So he spent hours. He had already graduated from college. He's living in New York, apparently from a fairly wealthy family, and so he spent hours reading Prabhupada's books. And then somehow, I think he was on a mailing list or something. He found out, oh, there's a new book coming out. It must have been a new volumes of the of the Bible. Fifth Canto. Oh, it was, it was after the marathon. Okay. Anyway, so, so uh, he said, oh, i got to have that book. But he couldn't, he couldn't get, so he said, oh, okay, I'm going to have to meet one of the devotees. So he knew that they were going to Port Authority, where they, they were in which. So he, he, he finally asked her, he approached her and asked her, do you have this, this new book? And he saw her, his interest, and she spent, as he said, so much time with him. And she, they were collecting for the new building. When I came, they were collecting, you know, so they would always like try to... And she ended up collecting literally thousands of dollars from him, a, a check he went and got. And eventually, he, you know, he got the book, came and saw Prabhupada, and a, a lecture, and he joined up. But he, his book did, books just read from day one. But eventually, he, he, he messed up his health, his health became weak. And he, I remember, we were about to move to L.A., and he asked me, who was working with the press, can you ask Robert Bolivar and see if I can join the press so I can be a proofreader? I have a degree from Yale or whatever it was, Dartmouth, whatever. And so he became the main proofreader from there. He went to Europe and became David. Well, what happened was uh, he, he, she didn't have the book. So she said, well, at least you can give a donation. He said, well, I don't have my checkbook. I don't have any cash on me. And she said, that's all right. We can go to your flat. We can go to your apartment. Oh, God. All right. So he goes and he says, just wait here. I'll be back. And he, she's, she's actually, she mentioned this in the, in the interview. She's waiting like 15 minutes, and she's thinking, ah, oh, this guy's not going to come back. And then finally he comes. He's got his checkbook. He says, listen, I'm only going to give you $1,000. She says, no, no, you got to get $5,000. This is 70. You got to get $5,000. So he said, oh, God, all right, all right. 5000 bucks." yeah. <laughs> Didn't even get a book. He <laughs> Didn't get a book. <laughs> She was Daivi Shakti. She Prabhupada gave her an appropriate name. <laughs> Shakti of Krishna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his, that was his money. Yeah. Well, he he, he was with a, from a, fa a wealthy family, so he, they were taking care of him. But uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Anything on there? Yes. Yeah, I've got an interesting comment. All right. Uh, this is way back before, like any of the books were came out, but including Bhagavad Gita and teachings of Lord Chaitanya. But Prabhupada said that we could we could uh, use the, the Radha, Dr. Radhakrishnan's Bhagavad Gita 
to read from because it was scholarly and the <clears throat> and the verses were okay because he, he just translated them but he said don't read any of the purports <laughs> and uh, so that particularly that one purport that we all know of is that he said uh, it's not to Krishna that we surrender, but to the unborn and manifest within Krishna. Well, that's some interesting history that we didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, we were actually using that that Bhagavad Gita. That's all we had. <laughs> um, but Prabhupada was speaking about that, and he said, yes, uh, uh, doc, Dr. Radha Krishna, his initials were SR. And in the preface, he wrote the preface, and at the bottom of the preface, he, he, he just... Uh, signed it as S period, R period, or Sarva Pali Radha Krishna. So Prabhupada was, in the lecture, Prabhupada was, was saying, yes, he is, he is SR, simply rascal. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just like you were cracking up, we were all, it was a big laugh. And he actually used that a few times Early, in the early days, he, he used that and said, yes, yes, we have this expression in ISKCON, SR, SR. He is simply a rascal. <laughs> One note on that, uh, Dr. Radhakrishna, Hayagriva also used that Gita to take some elements for the, for the uh, translations. And Prabhupada said, as you mentioned, that the translations are okay, so he used that. I mean, it was, but one thing he took was the Blessed Lord said. And uh, that that become like, we want our blessed Lord said back. Why did you take it away? But Prabhupada once, <laughs> in the revision, but Prabhupada uh, also said, why they say the blessed Lord said? It should be the Supreme Personality of God is it. There's a lecture like that. Where you uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Shilabhavad ki.